For a long, long time, people have been trying to find ways to share information without revealing the underlying data. Just like two millionaires who want to find out who is richer, but don't want to tell each other how much they are worth. Most of us would want to protect our own privacy when it comes to sensitive information, be it personal healthcare data, behavioral data, genetic data, financial data, and so on. So how can we learn from data? You cannot directly see. How can we get insights from data without revealing specific information about any individual participants in the data set? Yep, in serious terms, we are talking about complying with the GDPR or General Data Protection Regulation in Europe. So in today's video, we'll be talking about some of the most state-of-the-art technologies and I'll walk you through some hands-on tools that aim at solving this exact problem, performing data analysis while being oblivious about the individual data points. This video is sponsored by Oblivious. It's no joke, it's the company's name. They developed an open source platform called Anti-Granular that helps you do data science on private data using Python. They're also currently hosting an exciting competition about this. More on that later. Ensuring data privacy is not easy. Even if you've anonymized all the personal identifiable information, there is still a chance that someone can trace back the data to a specific individual. This creates a very tough challenge. On one hand, data scientists are blocked from the most valuable datasets because they are too sensitive to be shared. On the other hand, many companies and organizations do not have a reliable way to handle sensitive data, and so the most valuable datasets sit forever in silos. At best, the data would be aggregated to an extent that it's impossible to do any machine learning or valuable analysis on it. Or you might have to go through a bunch of security procedures that take months to get access to the data itself. I've seen this happen again and again in my job as a data science consultant. It's frustrating. There are actually a lot of techniques available for protecting data privacy in data science. You've probably heard of federated learning, which is a decentralized way to train a machine learning model. This is essentially how the spam filters, chatbots, and all the recommendation tools on your phones and personal devices work. Everyone downloads the foundation machine learning model from the cloud, they train it on their private data, then summarize and encrypt the model's new configuration. Then the model updates are sent back to the cloud, decrypted, averaged, and integrated into the centralized model. This way, no one has to share their confidential data with other people to train a machine learning model. We also have many other technologies such as homomorphic encryption, differential privacy, and secure enclaves. They are all examples of privacy-enhancing technologies. If this is all new to you, don't panic. In general, every data science workflow can be reduced to two parts. We have the input and the output. Thus, we may choose to have input privacy, that is to keep the data as safe as possible as it is processed, whether by encrypting the input data or using an isolated and secure computer to work with the data. But hiding inputs from everyone is not enough. Sometimes people can reverse engineer the inputs from the output itself. For example, if you know the average age of a group of five people, while also knowing the average age of four of them, then you can easily calculate the age of the other person. That is why we also need to have output privacy. That is to share the outputs in a way that no one can reverse engineer the inputs. Census bureaus around the world have long used several statistical disclosure control techniques to prevent people from figuring out the individual input data of people like you and me. Unfortunately, some of these fancy techniques are still not being used in practice because they often require special hardware and infrastructure, and that means that not everyone can use them. Luckily, Oblivious has created the anti-granular platform, and it makes some of these techniques freely and widely accessible to everyone, including differential privacy and secure enclaves. Before we dive into those, I want to share that Oblivious is also holding a competition. And the challenge is to predict whether a person will get cancer by analyzing the banking 
and health insurance claims history. However, it's not like any cargo competition because you also need to balance the model accuracy with the privacy budget. So you need to aim to have the most accuracy while using the least privacy budget. I think it's a very exciting competition and I'm sure it will be useful for a lot of us working in data science field. You can follow the quick start to know how to get started with the competition. If you're interested, be sure to check it out in the description below. For this competition, you can use a lot of packages such as OP Pandas, which is a private data version of Pandas. There's also DiffPrivLib, which is useful for creating machine learning models on sensitive data. And next to that, we have Smart Noise SQL to add noise when querying sensitive data using SQL. And we have Smart Noise Synth, which is useful for creating synthetic data. And finally, we have OpenDP, which is a great package for creating pipelines for exploring and wrangling sensitive data. All these packages make use of differential privacy. It is a mathematical technique that introduces controlled noise to computations such that by looking at the output, one cannot tell whether any individual's data was included in the original dataset or not. In other words, with or without your data records, the outputs stay almost exactly the same. Hence, the privacy of every individual in the data is protected. The great thing about differential privacy is that you can specify the level of privacy loss or epsilon when computing the outputs. The smaller epsilon means less privacy loss. And this is one of the reasons why differential privacy has become a widely used privacy framework in many domains, including healthcare, finance, and social sciences. Now, let me walk you through a sample notebook to show you how this works in Python. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna install the anti-granular package with pip. And after this is installed, we can import the package uh, as ag and register our session here. And this line is also provided by Oblivious. So if you go back to the competition homepage, you can see that um, this line is provided. And if you've logged in, you can access your credentials and use it for registering your session. Now we we'll load the data set. And uh, remember that this cell magic percent percent ag is the magic that you use to uh, to execute your Python code on the anti-granular private Python server. And this is a trusted execution environment. That's another important approach to confidential computing, which is secure enclaves or trusted execution environments. This is to use a secure server for computation. And as we've talked about before, this is an input privacy method. Secure Enclave is a secure area of a main processor. It guarantees the protection of code and data loaded inside the computer in terms of confidentiality and integrity. It's like having a lockbox in the middle of an open room where the contents of the lockbox cannot be seen or altered, even though the box itself is accessible. So this makes sure that all your code and data is processed securely. And here we import some functions from the OP Pandas package and some other functions from anti-granular utilities. Then we can load the dataset. So the dataset is named adult population dataset. And with this dataset, we're going to create a simple machine learning model to predict if the person owns more than $50,000 per year. So we save this dataset to a response variable and we can get out our um, trading set and the test set. And remember that because this is a private sensitive data set, we are not allowed to view the raw data set, but rather using differential privacy, we're going to have to specify an epsilon that is the privacy loss that we are willing to assign. The epsilon value usually ranges between zero and one, but in some cases, you can use an epsilon value up to 10. We're going to describe the training set and uh, export it to a train x describe variable. And this would become a local variable because if you don't export it, next time if you run this again on anti-granular, 
then this epsilon would be counted another time towards your total use of epsilon in your competition. And that is something we want to avoid if you want to win in the competition. So here's the summary statistics of the training set. And of course, these numbers, there's already some noise added into the calculations. So these are not the exact count or exact mean or exact percentile values. And now we are going to do some data cleaning and modifying the data. And here's how you can query the data with OP pandas. For example, we count the number of records in the data set that have the income larger than 50K and those with the income less than or equal to 50K. And then we export the variables and we can use, as usual, libraries such as Seaborn or matplotlib to plot the count of incomes that we see. And here with this function, you can check how much um, epsilon have you used in your session. We can also see the correlation between the variables in our private data set. And similar as before, we also need to specify the amount of epsilon that we want to use. Finally, um, we are creating a logistic regression model using the diff lib library. And with this library, we can use a lot of different machine learning models on our private data set. We can fit the model um, using the epsilon that we choose. And here's the result with the score. And this score is actually the accuracy minus the epsilon divided by 200. So our actual accuracy might be a bit higher than this, but because of the epsilon that we use or the privacy loss that we incurred, that means that our score is a little bit lower. There's a lot to discuss when it comes to data privacy, but hopefully with this video, you got to know some new concepts and know that it's possible to do data analysis and extract meaningful insights even when you do not get to see the individual records in the data set itself. If you're curious about the anti-granular competition, be sure to check out the link in the description below. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye.